hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. There's a lot happening this morning in Acts chapter 16 in our story. We have Paul and Silas walking down the road in, in the city, and there's a woman walking behind them who's shouting out, These men are servants of the Most High God. And Paul got annoyed, which is interesting all in itself. Exercise the demon, right? She had a demon of divination. Um, Nancy read, um, and I just it just slipped right out of my head. Fortune, fortune telling, because it was a spirit of fortune telling. It was something that the the gods of that area they believed that there was a, a demon who would come and take residence in a person, and that person would then be able to divinate, which is a fancy way to say fortune telling. So, right? Paul casts out that demon. They get, they get arrested. They get beaten. They get run in jail. But yet they still sing hymns. They get set free, but they don't leave. There's a lot in this text this morning that we can talk about. But before we talk about that, I have, to, I have to tell you about one of my favorite movies. And you'll see how it fits here in just a minute. One of, one, one of the movies that this text reminded me of as I, as I started thinking about this week's lessons was is Braveheart. How many of you have seen the movie Braveheart? Great movie, right? It's about the battle between Scotland and England and England coming in to take over and Longshanks sending in his troops and, and his nobles to take over the land of, of Scotland and William Wallace rising up and, and doing what he has to do to, to, to keep his land free, right? In the movie, Wallace marries, marries a young peasant girl, but in the process of this, Longshank has instituted uh, Prima Nocta, which I'm not going to go too much into that right now. Anybody wants to know more about that, you can come ask me later what Prima Nocta is. But Longshank institutes Prima Nocta, which gets Wallace all worked up and, and doesn't, so they keep this marriage silent. But through all of this stuff happens, and, and the, the noblemen still find out, and they, so the countries go to war, and Wallace does whatever he can to make sure that it's not going to happen. But at one point, Wallace finally gets um, captured, right? And they have him on a torture bed. They're torturing him, right? They're using all kinds of the, the stretching, and they're, they've got all these medieval tools to, to cut him open and do nasty stuff to him. And Longshanks is on his deathbed, listening. And the, the guy standing over Wallace and the torturer is saying, all you have to say is mercy and this will all be done. We'll, we'll chop your head off and you'll be done with this. And so Wallace, struggling to even take breaths, to even speak, finally makes a motion like he wants to say something, right? And at, the, and at the very end here, as, as Longshanks is waiting to die, and he's waiting for Wallace to say mercy so that Wall, so the Longshanks knows that he's won, Wallace screams at the top of his voice, Freedom. 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 Longshanks dies knowing that he didn't win. You see, this text this morning is truly all about Freedom. And understanding who we are and whose we are and what the freedom is that we have. Right? Because there's three people in this, four people in this text that get set free. Actually, let me take that back. There's two people in this text that get set free. There's two people in this text that already know that they are. Right? So who are they? Two people that already know that they're free are Paul and Silas. They've been beaten, they've been stripped and beaten and thrown in prisons for wrong reasons. They've been in prison for reasons that don't, that aren't, shouldn't happen. Number one, we find out in the text that just follows this, that they are Roman citizens, and therefore they cannot be stripped and beaten without a trial. Oops. Somebody's going to get in trouble. But they're arrested because they told this spirit of divination to leave this woman. Right? Number one, woman that gets set free. And she's held captive by how many people? Trick question. She's held captive by the spirit, right? The spirit of divination that is residing in her, that allows her to tell the future. But she's also a 
slave already. And not only is she a slave to that demon that she may or may not want, we don't know, but even if she doesn't want that demon, who does want her to have that demon? The people that own her, because they're making lots of money because she's got this spirit in her. So even if she wanted to get rid of the spirit, the people that owned her wouldn't let her get rid of the spirit. So she's held captive by a spirit who is there because she's held captive by two people who don't want the spirit to let her go. Paul says, enough. Get out. And it goes. And she's made free. At least in part. And then there's the jailer, right? Who thinks he's doing his job and is free in the sense that he's following what society is telling him to do. As long as he does what the people who are his bosses tell him to do and he keeps in line and he does what, what needs to be done in order for his job, then he is doing what, he, what needs to be done and he is, in a sense, free. But is he actually free? Because he's a prisoner to the system in which he's employed. Because if he doesn't do his job right, which we see in the text, right, because... The, the earthquake came and the wall shook and the chains went off and all the doors opened and the, and the jailer saw it and what did he start to do? He started to kill himself because he didn't want to face what was going to come. Right? He knew that what the higher ups, the powers of, the, of that town were going to do to him was worse than him killing himself. And he's free. And then there's Paul and Silas who have been beaten and jailed for a pretty flimsy reason. But yet here they still are, singing and praying, locked up in chains, still praying, praying and singing. And why? Remember who Paul was, right? We've changed his name now. Because a couple weeks ago, the last time that we were, some of us were here, we gathered here, Paul, Paul was Saul, and he met Jesus on the road on the way to Damascus. Now some would say that, that Paul changed his name, right, from Saul to Paul, but it was probably more than likely that Saul is his Jewish name and Paul is his Greek name. It wasn't anything for people to have two names in that day and age. That they would be known by. It's kind of like, like you. Some of you have two names, right? You have a name that you go by to most people, and then there's the name that your parents call you. <laughs> <laughs> or you have a nickname for some people, and other people know you by a different name, right? There's there's people that could that call me all kinds of names. <laughs> They're all good. Don't go that way. I mean, you know, we all have different names. And so Saul really is, Saul really didn't change his name to Paul. He was already known as Paul. But he goes by Paul now because that's his name that he's known to, by to the Greeks. And that's who Christ has called him to go to and to deliver the message. Right? So he's not given up Saul. Because Saul is Paul and part of his past. And it's part of his past that we need to remember. The most vile persecutor of the church is now bound and locked in jail after he'd been beaten for doing what Christ has called him to do and is singing praises and praying to God. Because he knows even in this jail cell that he's free. And here's the, and the next interesting part of the text, if you read the text the rest of the way through, right, the jailer then finds out how it is that he can be free, becomes free, the jailer and his whole family are baptized, and then they all go back to the jailer's home and have a meal together. Well, if you continue to read on this text, it says that the next morning, the, the magistrates of the town sent the police officers to the jail to tell Paul and Silas that they could go free. So Paul and Silas, after they had been singing in the jail, they went to the, to the jailer's house, got their wounds cleaned up, baptized the jailer and his family, sat down and had dinner, and then where did they go? Back to jail. They didn't go free. All of the prisoners that could have left didn't. They stayed there. Because they knew even in that prison that they weren't prisoners. That they were truly free. So I wonder what it is that is our prison. That is our keeping us captive. What is it that's holding us back? That we just need to be like William Wallace and say, in all of this agony, in all of this trouble, it doesn't matter. Because now I'm truly free.
because of what Jesus has done for me and for all of my family. The fact that Jesus died, went to the cross, and gave me new life is enough to show me that I don't need to worry about the circumstances around me. Right? We try to live our lives out of abundance and out of, out of the greatness that we get, out of the blessings that we get, but Paul and Silas show us that it's not about living our lives as Christians out of our own abundance. It's about living our lives as Christians out of the fact that we've been named and claimed by God. What we're going to see here just in a few minutes for Eileen. She's going to come up here and God is going to name her and claim her here at this point. Yeah, it's your time will come. It's coming, I promise. <laughs> She's going to come up here and God is going to name her and claim her. And that's how she lives out her Christian calling and her life as a disciple of Christ. Not in the abundance that she's gotten to give to others, but out of the blessing that she has as being called and named by Jesus. That's what we're called to be. To live our lives in such a way that we're always singing and praying to God, regardless of our circumstances. Because we can do all things through the power of Jesus that dwells within us. So be today like Paul and Silas. And don't let your circumstances make you be unhappy. But live in the blessedness of being a chosen child of God. And share that grace and love with all the world.